Bandesh from Jaskata. I am back today with another Indian Grandmaster, a young star who, who dominated the entire 44th Chess Olympiad with his remarkable performance playing for the India 2 team, which ultimately went on to win the bronze medal. Here are three tactics by Nihal Sarin, India's 18 year old Grandmaster and chess prodigy. In the 44th Chess Olympiad, he had an amazing, brilliant run where he played 10 games, he won 5 games and drew, a, drew the other 5, thus remaining unbeaten in the entire tournament, which is something that even Gukesh cannot uh, accomplish as he did lose one game to, to Abu Satrao. But not Nihal, he did not lose a single game in the entire Olympiad and he played 10 out of the 11 rounds in total. So, Let's let's dive right into into his game and look at the top three tactics that he deployed throughout the Chess Olympiad. Right. So this is round three. Uh, Nih Nihil Sarin versus Wagner Sebastian. Uh, Sarin is playing white pieces pieces and uh, Sebastian is playing the, the black pieces. Um, so the last move that that uh, Sarin had made here was rook to g5 and um, so Sebastian replies with uh, c captures on g c captures on d4 now there's a very simple move here that most of us would be inclined to you know instantaneously play with his e captures on on d4 um, you know just take the pawn back gain the material um, but uh, and he'll had some better plans for for the pawn and he's like nope I'm not doing the exchange so he simply pushes the pawn uh, to e4. Now, what this does is he had thought about uh, a long trajectory of moves after this, um, which which take him straight away to victory. And how we'll see how. So after after e4, um, Sebastian pushes pushes on f5, um, and obviously uh, Nihil says, "Okay, I am still not capturing it. I'll still wait it out. I I have a few plans in mind." So he he backs up his E pawn, uh, he backs up his pawn on e4 with his pawn on f3. You, you might notice that the that uh, Sarin has like doubled pawns on the f file, so uh, he wants to un undouble, uh, straighten out his pawn structure a little bit. So like if if Sebastian captures f, f captures e4, um, f captures on e4, and th then the two pawns can be, uh, you know, it'll make a good pawn island uh, of two pawns. So yes. That, that's what uh, Nihil Sarin was thinking about. Um, but obviously Sebastian does not bite. He's like, no, I'm you know, I'm not killing uh, your pawn. I'm not, uh, you know, uh, giving you a chance to straighten out your pawn structure. So he plays rook to f8. And uh, Nihil says, okay, fine. I'll just carry on with my plan. And I'll just, uh, I'll just take uh, tripling my pawn, however temporary it might be. So... Uh, e captures on f5, queen captures on on d5. Obviously, it was a this was a brilliant uh, knight sacrifice as the e pawn was ga was guarding the knight on on d5. The queen was cut off from from it because of the pawn on d4. So after after <coughs> after Sarin takes the pawn on f5, tripling his pawns on uh, on the f file, uh, Sebastian takes a bait and you know. Uh, Sebastian takes the bait and he capture, captures the knight, hanging knight on d5. But this is exactly what Sarin wanted uh, Sebastian to do. And this is the brilliance of Nihil Sarin that he saw so many moves ahead. He, he, he you know, uh, set up this perfect um, knight sacrifice all for what? As you might have seen that um, capturing this pawn opens a discovery against uh, the queen. Uh, against Sebastian's queen on d5, and that's exactly what what uh, Nihisarin does. So f captures on g6 was played, and it was it was in this position that uh, Bogner Sebastian actually resigned the game because there is nothing to be done over here, right? First of all, your queen is being attacked, so uh, the queen must be protected at any cost. Um, let's say let's say the queen goes to uh, b7, right? It doesn't matter where the queen goes, but just for the sake of this, uh, just for the sake of showing, I'll just show it to you. That okay, the queen goes to b7, trying to guard this, this square maybe. Uh, all these three squares, all important because the pawn will be advancing at any point of time. 
However, it doesn't work because when uh, when G captures on eight seven, it comes with a check. It comes with a check from the rook. It comes with a check of its own. So the the king, the black's king, is under uh, under a double check, and you cannot capture this pawn because the queen is nicely guarding it. Um, and you cannot even capture this pawn with the queen because the rook is also checking. So the, the king is under a double check and the king has to move. Now, what are the options for the king? The king, so the king can go to either uh, h8 or f8. h8, the king is boxed and, um, you know, uh, yeah, if, if the king goes to h8, uh, queen captures on d4, it's, it's, it's a nasty, nasty, uh, you know, position to be in. Uh, you'll have to... Yeah, you'll have to take uh, part with your rook first, and then you'll have to part with your queen before it, it's finally checkmate, right? And that's just not desirable. So after after uh, after g captures on h h7, the only viable square for the king is to, uh, the only other uh, possible square for the king to go is f7. And as soon as the king goes to um, f7, uh, it, it this is this beautiful check uh, just opens a. a an attack on the queen, and as soon as the uh, the, the the king moves, um, yeah, we got we got we got well of the queen. It doesn't matter whether where the king goes. Uh, so yeah, it's you lose your queen, and the uh, and the pawn on on eight seven is ready for promotion at any point of given time, and it's nicely guarded by the queen. The two rooks are doing a fantastic job of you know backing it up, not letting the the two rooks get to it. So yeah, that's that's basically it. Uh, all right, maybe the queen cannot, maybe the queen would not go there, but it, it doesn't matter where the queen goes because uh, even if the queen goes like somewhere, somewhere like uh, e6, uh, we still stick with the plan. Uh, check again, uh, king to h8 is checkmate, queen to I'm sorry, king to um, yeah, king to f, f7, and we proceed with the plan, rook to rook to g7, check. And obviously, if the if the king comes here on f7, then rook to uh, rook to g6 check, and we again uh, gobble up the queen. So maybe the king can go to to e e8, right? Uh, but but even even if even if the king goes to e8, um, this yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, rook to rook to g8 is the is the master move over here. Uh, if the if the rook captures, uh, we have this amazing uh, with, uh, pawn captures on d8 check, and obviously you'll have to uh, trade the queens. So now we are you have a queen and uh, a rook against a, a bishop and a rook. Uh, this game is obviously completely winning for for Nihil So this this was the position in which uh, Sebastian Morgan Sebastian resigned as he, he did not have anything to do, and. That is where uh, this pawn push on e4 becomes really, really important. He planned this this uh, this one move. If he had captured, uh, there would have been no pawn here, and there would have been no exchanges on this square or this square. And yeah, this whole diagonal was brilliantly maneuvered by uh, Nihil Sarin and the pawn. He had double pawns, but he didn't let that go. He used that as a strength. So this was one of the tactics that Nihil Sarin used. Let's move on to the second one. Obviously, Ogden Sebastian designed so Nihil won the game. Uh, this this game is from round 10 of the 44th Chess Olympiad. Uh, Nihil Sarin was playing uh, Uzbekistan's Nodirbek, uh, Yakov and Nodirbek, uh, one of the, <coughs> of the most uh, proficient players of chess uh, currently in the world. Obviously, uh, <laughs> obviously Uzbekistan also won the, uh, the, uh, the entire Olympiad, so this, this game was played against uh, the Olympiad winning player, uh, uh, Jakub Nodirbek. Here, um, as you can see, the, the engine suggestions are turned on and uh, Saren is playing playing black, uh, Nodirbek is playing the, uh, the white pieces. Uh, this is around move 26 and both the players are equal. If you see the game, uh, if you see the game leading up to this moment, right from the first, first move, right from the opening till the mid, mid game, which is move 26 right now over here, both the players have exchanged most of the pieces like like this. Both the queens are gone, one rook is gone, uh, and two of the minor pieces are are also gone. They are equal on pawn. They are equal in terms of pawns as well, seven pawns each. So they are playing for a perfect draw. Okay, no one is worried about anything more than a run. No one is trying 
no one seems to be trying more than that however one thing that is there uh Saren wanted a draw okay uh, he was like okay i'm not taking any chances i need a draw um uh, pushing for a win against uh, yakub and other back would be could be quite ambitious and if you can get a draw against him it's it's always uh, favorable you know uh, to have that um so yes the engine suggests that uh, nihil sarin should have taken the pawn on g3 with pawn on f4 however uh, nihil sarin has some different plans in his mind he's like okay no i'm not taking the pawn i just i just play bishop to f6 and then uh, obviously enough uh, norbert doesn't want to just capture and let let uh, nihil sarin you know uh, straight in our response structure so he doesn't capture as well he plays king to king, king to g2 uh and this is the brilliant move that uh uh that nihal sar in plays uh knight to f5 this one move will lead to a series of exchanges that will just you know make it a sure shot draw and nothing else uh knight to f knight to f5 bishop captures on f5 pawn captures on f5 finally uh northern back is like all right i'll i'll kill your uh pawn because now your your pawn set pawn structure is already straightened out and if you have to you want to kill you have to mess it up again so perfect like playing textbook game from both the sides and other big is like all right i'll capture your pawn on f4 um and then still uh, sarin is in no hurry to capture this pawn he's like all right i get to it when i get to it i first need to <laughs> uh, you know exchange a few more pieces so he's he plays uh, bishop captures on d4 now here another way could have exchanged the bishops and you know uh played with the two rooks and a few a few pawns on the board but norbert is like no i don't even want the the rooks on the board uh we better exchange the the rooks itself rather than exchanging minor pieces so he plays knight to d2 and uh, sorry i'm sorry rook to d2 and nihil sarin offers his, uh, accepts his offer he's like all right let's let's exchange the rooks so bishop to f6 rook captures on d8 with check bishop captures on d8 and as you can see both, all the major pieces on the board are now gone uh one one minor piece and one major piece have just been exchanged and a few more pawns will also be exchanged in the series so uh f captures on g g5 another back grabs one more pawn but nil sarin is like all right i'll recover that no no sweat no no blood um h captures on g g5 uh h3 bishop to c c7 bishop to bishop to c1 um pawn push by pawn push by sarin g4 uh, h captures on g4 f captures on g4 uh, <laughs> here literally both the players are playing for a draw and they know it's going to be a draw but uh, sarin just wanted to same position f4 uh, on passant by uh, by nil sarin uh, g captures on f4 and uh, king captures on f3 so the entire the uh, the entire king side um, has been completely obliterated by both the players it was a few moves ago just a few moves ago it was on move 27 if i'm not wrong yes it uh, around move 27 uh, the entire king king side was was just you know packed with pieces like four pawns uh four pawns for black three pawns for white uh, a few minor pieces and all and you know a few moves later the entire king side has been wiped clean with only the two kings remaining obviously three three pawns are on the on the queen side one minor piece two king uh, one, one kings on for both the parties and this is a sure shot draw basically and uh, nihil uh, nihil sarin just wanted to you know cement this draw is like okay i'm i'm going for a draw i want a draw and um that 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 move over here knight to f5 that was the that was the move that got him that draw so uh, that op- op- opened up a series of exchanges that ultimately led to the draw uh, so beautifully played by by nihal sarin to draw a match uh, on board 2 in the 10th round of the chess olympiad out of 11 against someone of the caliber of yakubov and other back so that was the second tactic moving on to the third and the final tactic for the video uh, this play, this is the 11th round of the 44th chess olympiad it's nihal sarin versus matias globaum um and as you can see uh, sarin is playing the white pieces the last move he made was bishop to d3 uh, here uh, matthias pushes the the a pawn a to a6 
uh, obviously this knight on b5 is dying uh, but niha sarin is like okay um, you want to kill my knight but i i am going to you know i'm going to mess up your pawn structure first and like all right i'll go out on my terms if i have to go out so he he, go, he goes uh, bishop captures in f5 um, and then obviously he has to take back uh, matias has to take back the material so he 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 plays g captures on f5 this messes up uh, black pawn structure as there are double pawns on the f file and uh, there's there's an isolated pawn a weakness rather on uh, on the h file against the very nicely placed uh, three pawns uh, on fg and h files for uh, for white so after after g captures on f5 um Larin is still not worried about his knight on b5. He's like, okay, no, I'm going to counter attack. I don't care about the knight as of yet because you cannot kill it. Your rook is dying, and after you kill it, if rook is dying, even your knight will be dying. Uh, you'll have to figure something out. So uh, after king to e2, rook to h1, and and uh, Larin can you know choose to push his knight away somewhere. Uh, if he if he plays it here, he can attack the knight as uh, the, the pawn as well. But he's like, okay, no, I want to go for the exchange. Let's get this over with. He knows that there is a weakness here, and he's up by one pawn. So uh, it, it's obviously beneficial for Nihal Sarin to exchange everything on the board. So he 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 accepts the exchange offer, and uh, King captures on d2. Uh, rook captures on h2, equalizing the material at least. Uh, king to e e3 and now a captures on um, on b5 uh, king to d <clears throat> king to d4 uh, h5 by h5 by matias um, and finally king reaches the c2 square uh, sorry c5 square and this pawn is beyond saving now it cannot be saved so there will be two these two pawns again these two past pawns they will just march right on with the help of the king and the rook uh, rook to c rook to h3 but this pawn is not dying anywhere. This pawn is not going anywhere because the rook protects it nicely. Uh, king captures on b5, uh, h4, and now uh, <laughs> Saren starts pushing his pawn. a4, uh, h captures, h captures on g3, rook to c1, rook to, rook to h4, rook to g3, rook captures on f4, rook captures on g g3 with a check, rook rook to uh, g4 blocking the check, offering an exchange, but if if you exchange right now, uh, the pawn this pawn on 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 G4 will will raise faster to the uh, last square than the pawn on A5. So obviously, Sari declines the draw offer. Uh, rook to F3, uh, F4, Bishop. Uh, sorry, pawn to A pawn A5, King to F6, uh, A6, King to King to E5, A7. Rook to g g8 and rook to a a3. It was in this position that uh, Matthias Lobo resigned because this pawn is going going to a8 and promoting no matter what, and you will have to give up your rook. Um, and yes, it will be an easy win for for uh, Nihil Sarin from there on. So yeah, that was the video. That those were the three tactics used by the uh by by Sarin, Nihal Sarin uh in the 44th chess Olympiad he ended up winning the gold individual gold for board two um so congratulations to him on that um yeah that that's it for the video that's it from my side hope you guys understood the video thank you very much for watching